In the previous video, we used analytical methods to add two sine waves, and the two sine waves that we added are shown in the top left hand corner here. So we have V1 equals 2.5 sine 8 pi t plus 0.35, and V2 equals 3.75 sine 8 pi t plus 0.75. So these two sinusoidal waves represent AC voltages. Now we're going to add the same two voltages together in this video, except this time we're going to use a computational method. So the first thing that we need to do is consider our time axis and to decide the maximum value that we want on that axis. Well, we can see here that we have an angular frequency of eight pi and an angular frequency of eight pi represents a frequency of four. In order to get from angular frequency to frequency, we divide by 2 pi. If we have a frequency of 4, that means we have 4 complete cycles every second. And if we have 4 complete cycles every second, that equates to a cycle every quarter of a second. The reason why that calculation is important is because if I want to plot a minimum of one full wave, then I know that on my time axis, I need to go up to at least 0.25. So we can see from the template of the diagram that I've already set up that I've allowed for my time axis to go up to 0.35 and that's to ensure that I get at least one full wave. Now on the left hand side we have some time values and I'm going up in steps of 0.0005 so I go from 0.0005 to 0.001 and so on. Now the simplest way to produce that column of values is to type in the first three values. So I typed in zero. I typed in 0 0.0005. And I typed in 0 0.001. Now Excel will recognize that as an increasing function. And if you highlight those three cells and then drag down, or you can copy and paste, but if you drag that down, then what you'll see is that that formula or that sequence will continue. So none of the values have been replaced there because I've already carried out that process. Next, we need to input our formulas for V1 and V2 here. And we're going to use Excel functions for this. And we're going to relate each of those to the time values in this first column here. So for V1, I'm going to type equals 2.5, which is my amplitude, times sine, open brackets, and in this bracket, I need to do 8 times pi times t. So 8 times pi. I've already copied the value of pi to my clipboard, so I'm going to do control V. And then times t, I'm going to click on the cell with our t value in. We're not quite finished because we need to add the phase angle of 0.35. Now I'm going to do the same for V2. So in the cell for V2, I'm typing a formula to represent V2, which is equals 3.75 times sine again, open brackets, 8 pi t again. So I do 8 times control V for my pi value times my cell with time in and this time plus 0.75. So the advantage of using an Excel function for this is that when I paste that formula down, instead of cell referencing A5 in order to get my value of time, when it moves to the second box, it's going to look at cell A6. So each time that formula moves down the cell, it's going to look at the corresponding time value. Let's just remove that for a moment. Now our final column here is V1 plus V2. And when we add these functions, what we need to do is add the instantaneous values of V1 and V2. So in this cell here, I'm going to add the value of V1 when time equals zero. I'm going to add the value of V2 when time equals zero. And that will give me the value of V1 plus V2 when time equals zero. So equals, I'm going to cell reference B5 for my V1 value and I'm going to add a cell reference to C5 for my V2 value. Now I have each of my formulas. 
What I'm going to do next is paste all of those down right to the very bottom of this column. So you could do Control C, highlight the cells, Control V, or you can just drag down this tab here in the bottom right hand corner. I'll just do this for a couple of cells first of all. And we can see that as our formula changes, our values change accordingly. Now I'm going to paste this all the way to the bottom of the column or down to a time of t equals 0.35 to ensure I get my full wave. Now I have all of my values, I can scroll back up to the top to inspect my graph. Now to simplify things, I'd already set up the template for my graph, but if I hadn't done that, all I would need to do is plot an xy scatter graph of time against v1 plus v2. So you would highlight all of the data in the time column all the way to the bottom. You would hold control and highlight all of the data in the v1 plus v2 column all the way to the bottom of the table. And then you would insert a scatter graph. And that's represented by this icon here. So now that I have my graph, I can take some important values from it. Because what I want to find first of all is the amplitude of V1 plus V2. And once I've found the amplitude of V1 plus V2, I want to find my lag time, and I can use my lag time to determine my phase angle. Now we can see from inspection that our amplitude is a little bit over 6, but we want to be more accurate than that. So if we highlight our graph, and what we're looking for is a data point at the peak here. Now hovering over the graph will give us various different values. So if I hover here, I can see that the coordinates of that point is 0 0.039 and 6.1304. That 6.1304 represents the amplitude at that point. Let's just check the next peak to find out if that is actually the highest value. So if we go over here, 6.128, which rounds to 6.13. So I'm happy that the amplitude of this combined wave is 6.13. The next thing we can find is our lag time. And the way that we're going to find the lag time is by finding the point that our graph crosses the time axis here. Now we can see that that is 0 0.226 to three decimal places. Let's just move along and see if we get anything different. 0.2255. So again, that corresponds with 0.226 to three decimal places. That's the point that our graph crosses our time axis. If there was no phase shift here, then that graph would cross at the time equal to the periodic time. And the reason for that is if we were to start at zero, so if we were here and we had one complete wave without a phase shift, then the graph would appear something like this, and it would cross at the periodic time that we've already said is 0.25 seconds. But it doesn't, it crosses instead at 0.226 seconds. So that means our graph has been shifted left by a distance of 0.024 seconds. Let's just annotate our graph and we'll go through that again. So first of all, by hovering over our highest point on the graph here, we know that our combined function of V1 plus V2 has an amplitude of 6.13. We know that we have a sine function, and we know that the angular frequency is the same as our two original functions, so 8 pi t. And what we're now trying to establish is the phase angle. Now we know it's a positive phase angle, and the way that we know it's a positive phase angle is because our starting point of our graph has been shifted from right to left. A shift of right to left corresponds with a positive phase angle. Now when we come to trying to establish that phase angle, the first thing we need is the lead or lag time. And what we have here is a lead time. Now we said that our graph should cross at 0.25 here. And the reason it should cross at 0.25 is because we have an angular frequency of 8 pi. Therefore, we have a frequency 
of 8 pi over 2 pi, which is 4. And therefore, we have a periodic time of 1 over 4, or 0 0.25. So if there was no phase shift, our graph would cross at 0 0.25. But it doesn't. Instead, it crosses at this point here. And when we hovered over our graph, we found that point to be 0 0.226. So our graph has shifted from right to left this distance here. And this distance is 0 0.25 minus 0 0.226. Well, 0 0.25 minus 0 0.226 is 0 0.024. And that represents a lead time because the graph is being caused to lead or precede its original starting point. So if we have a lead time of 0 0.024, we need to find the corresponding phase angle. And from the equations and information sheet for a lead time, we know that the phase angle can be found by doing omega times the lead time. So we can just plug some numbers into this. Our omega is 8 pi, our lead time is 0 0.024, therefore our phase angle is 0 0.603 to 3 decimal places. So down here in our final formula, in the brackets, we have 8 pi t plus 0 0.603. And if you check back on the previous video, you'll see that that's the same formula for the function v1 plus v2 that we obtained when we used the analytical methods.